Hi, my name is Jake, and I am a bookish drummer. So today is going to be a book review for a book that I just recently read. I loved it. It's written not by one of my favorite authors, but by one of my favorite directors. Hint, hint. And that would be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood by Quentin Tarantino. And this is his novelization of his most recent film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Quentin Tarantino is my all-time favorite director by far. I've seen all of his movies several, several times. So when I heard that he was going to be novelizing one of his best movies, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I was extremely excited. So I will be 100% honest with y'all. My reviews are always subjective. They're all about my personal enjoyment for the book. And of course, since Quentin Tarantino is my all-time favorite director, I am 100% biased here. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I loved this book. So the book basically follows the main characters that we also get in the movie. The main character, of course, being Rick Dalton, who is sort of an aging cowboy actor who's kind of having um, a midlife crisis, an ex existential crisis about not being the leading man anymore. He used to be the lead on this big hit TV show, Bounty Law, but that show has been canceled and he's had to take several minor roles that he's not exactly proud of. And his part of the story is very much about dealing with that and overcoming his feeling of not being the leading man anymore. We also follow Cliff, who is Rick Dalton's stunt double. He's been a stunt double since Bounty Law and for many, many years on all of his other projects. And he's just kind of a cool dude. And this book is definitely sort of a day in the life of Hollywood in the late 60s. And while Rick is off filming a part for this new show that he's working on, Cliff is kind of just wandering around town and he gets involved in these hippies that are involved with Charles Manson. And we also get perspectives from Charles Manson, from some of his followers, and from Sharon Tate. And if you, do, and if you don't know who Sharon Tate is, she was one of the victims of Charles Manson and his followers. And she was an up-and-coming young actress in Hollywood at the time. Luckily, however, Quentin Tarantino is a huge fan of taking history, taking historical events, and sort of changing them up. He did that in, in Inglorious Bastards, where he basically... One of the big worries for the movie when it was first coming out was that they didn't want, really want to see Sharon Tate getting murdered, obviously, because that was a horrific event. But Tarantino loves to change history, change historical events, and kind of twist them into his own image. And, you know, she doesn't get hurt at all, and something else happens. And if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this book, for me, as already a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino and the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It wasn't perfect, but I did give it four and a half stars. It was terrific. I will say, if you are not a huge Tarantino fan and you have not seen this movie or if you did not like this movie, you know, there's no reason for you to go out and read this book because it's basically for diehard Tarantino fans. And that's what I am, so I loved it. But for anyone who's not an already diehard Tarantino fan, I I would not recommend this book. It has a very narrow margin for audience. So if you're not already a fan of the movie, don't read the book. For many Quentin Tarantino fans, including myself, a lot of the times we watch his movies, 
which can already be pretty lengthy. A lot of the times they're two and a half, sometimes even three hour movies. A lot of the times his fans want his films to be longer. I will say for the book, that's not necessarily the case. And I feel like the book could have used a little bit of editing, not a major edit. It's about a 400 page book. And I think it could have been more like a 350 page book. So not like a huge edit, not a huge drop in word count, but there's definitely some scenes in here that go on just a little bit too long, especially in the second chapter where we learn more about Cliff's kind of uh, take on movies. That was interesting at first, but it just went on like a little too long. And I'm like, okay, Tarantino, we get it. You're a huge uh, movie guy. We get it. But for the most part, I loved diving deeper into the characters' minds, into their backstories. And I will say this is really, a lot, in a lot of ways, it's Cliff's book. Because a lot of the chapters are from his perspective. We get his thought processes. We learn way more about his past than we ever did in the movie. In the movie, we learn that he's a war hero and a war veteran. But we don't really dive deeper into that. We just kind of like, okay, that's what he is. But in the book, we get way more detail about his life during the war and a lot of the people he killed. And I thought all of that was great. There's also just a lot of scenes that Tarantino probably had to cut from his original draft of the movie just because they would not have worked well in a movie form. But they work brilliantly. In this book, there's a scene like towards the end of the book where Rick Dalton and Jim Stacy are just like at a bar for like a 30 page chapter and you're like this is great but maybe it wouldn't have worked well in the movie but that's what the book is for i love this book but like i said it's not a perfect book there were some instances where i wished tarantino would have stayed a little bit longer in the scene and fleshed it out just a tiny bit more and then there were some scenes where i felt the exact opposite where i felt it should have been edited down a little bit but at that point it's just a little bit nitpicky and this book was just tremendous. I had such a blast reading it and I gave it about four and a half stars. As far as which one I like more, the book versus the movie, obviously the movie. I mean, I love the book, but come on. Tarantino is a born movie director. My favorite director of all time. I love his movies, and this movie is terrific. One of my favorites by him. Probably my favorite is still Pulp Fiction, but this one is like second or third. And if it is true what Tarantino is saying, that he's only going to direct one more movie, which I hope is not true, but if that is true, at least I know he has a good career lined up as an author, and I do hope that he writes something new that's not based on some of his other works. But if he is going to novelize any of his other books, I will obviously read those. Some of his earlier films, I feel, could really do well as a novel. Like Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. Those would be great books. So in conclusion, I love this book. Not perfect, but I gave it four and a half stars. And I, would, I really wouldn't recommend it to anyone who isn't a big fan of this movie and just not a big Tarantino fan in general. Let me know what you guys thought of this video and please let me know if you've read this book. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I also plan on eventually ranking all of his movies. That would of course be very difficult because I love all of his movies. I know some of my favorites, but putting any of his films like at the very bottom is going to be very difficult. And uh, please let me know if you're interested in that. I will probably make it anyway, but please let me know if you're interested. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.